Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 16 of the Nova Notes podcast, where we talk about VR creators, filmmakers, avatar creators, and many more inside of the virtual platform. I'm your host, Nova Player, and today with me, I have one of the most noted filmmakers and awesome people inside of VR chat, uh, the little sussy bean himself, Gerzybo. Oh, hiya. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Gersey, welcome to the Nova Notes <laughs> podcast. It is such a blessing to have you here. Hope you're doing well. Absolutely. You too, man. <laughs> I'm doing pretty awesome. Good, good. So, yeah. So for the listening audience at home, uh, kind of give like a brief description of what exactly do you do inside of the VR chat platform? Absolutely. So what I do, well, after what I do here in the, in the VR platform, I am one of the studio executives for a VR chat film studio called Portal Media. And I also serve as a media team lead for an events organization for Project Community. Often what I do a lot is that I help create content for all, 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 all kinds of communities, really. We, um, over at Portal Media, we specialize in creating, creating VR chat short films to little skits here and there and just telling stories in some of the, some of the wackiest ways possible. And over at Project Community... Uh, over over there, so they are an, event, an events organization where we bring together people, uh, bit, communities and creators, big and small, together in a place. For, to, uh, to, and, that, and so that for anybody who's brand new to the VR platform, maybe putting on a headset for, for the first time, or just trying to f find a place to belong, PGIT and what I do, we help we help give them a place to to find to find their to find where they can belong to, new friends and things like that. And yeah, I, I essentially create a lot of content. <laughs> Fair enough. So yeah, with that, you know, let's, let's take it back to the, you know, the origins of Gersibo. So, you know, first and foremost, you know, what inspired you to, you know, create films and work on films, uh, in, you know, on the VR chat platform? Yeah. Oh my goodness. And that's taken, that's taken it all the way back to, I believe around sophomore, sophomore year of high school, actually. I was, but uh, back then I was interested in, and actually I'm still interested to this day with uh, astronomy and astrophysics. I'm I'm someone who really loves space. N needless to say, sci-fi is one of my all-time favorite genres. But um, at the at the time though, um, I I had uh, I was more I was kind of focused in around in the in the sciences area, and here here I here I went here I went to all the all all the all these various universities and colleges, and needless to say, I found out that there's a lot of math when it comes to space. But I still love this. But I still love space. But in sophomore year, I took a I took a digital video production course, and and little, little did I know that I I actually uh, wound up having a great time in that course, and it, it's it, in a, in a, in a way it kind of inspired me just just kind of get creative and just 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 kind of play around and see see what happens. Uh, I remember when I was uh, we were using these these di these digital camcorders and just uh, just 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 like st just like standard standard little equipment here and there using uh, I remember we were, we were using um, oh gosh we were, we, were, we were using like just basic iMovie uh, ba ba just basic little VFX software here and there and just just that just that little experience alone nothing professional just very casual stuff and it it it, 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 it gave me just like like a, a kind of a window as to what's possible. And eventually, later on, uh, I I look I looked back on that course and noticed how much I kind of kind of had a great time with that, and uh, remembering how, how some of my some of my all time favorite movies and things like that. I started looking more into filmmaking. A lot of people a lot of people when when, uh, when they when they get into filmmaking, some may, some may say uh, that they that they've always loved movies as a kid. They've always wanted to become a filmmaker ever since they were ever since they were little. For me, for me, actually, it was more of a. It was kind of. It was kind of more on the the later end. I kind of got into filmmaking a little bit later on, <laughs> and so um, yeah, I was. Uh, I I started getting more get, diving more into diving more into filmmaking, the craft, and just uh, e even taking my my folks' standard definition Sony Handycam, and just kind of going around see what see what see what I could do. Um, my my fr my friend um, my my friend Rumham, who is. Um, Who's who's current? Who's currently here here in here in VR chat? We we've been we've been friends for a very long time. We were used back in the back in the days before Discord. Um, we were doing before Teamspeak actually. We were we were doing filming little filmmaking contests between each other over Skype. It was it was it was it's it's a fun time. It was it was really really great and just just being able to just tell stories on my own and learning learning how to make how to just make films with what you have. Learn be, be, being very DIY with it. Nothing professional. It just 
using what you have real that's how that's how you get creative that's how you get some of your best work just those creative limitations and stuff and yeah then uh ev- eventually towards the end of towards towards the end of my time in high school i um went out to the tour went out to all these different film schools here and there seeing what see where i can wh- where i can jump into and well yeah eventually i i did go to film school i went through um all, all four years and i currently have a bachelor of the arts degree in digital cinema with a minor in animation and since then yeah i've i've worked on sets of whether it be short films to music videos i've done i've shot weddings i've done some i've done a lot i've done a lot of cor- cor- uh, corporate videos here and there i've done some live streams i actually uh, shot a feature film at one point it was for a it was for it was for a, st- a student thesis film here and there I've worked, I've worked with lots of people. I've worn a lot of hats in different creative departments, whether it be in the camera department, to the lighting, to sound design, to editing, pretty much about the whole shebang, really. And yeah, and yeah, and 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 and, and over time, um, I'm now working full time as a videographer, and for for a for, for a bit for a private company here and there, and I get to I get to bring what I what I've practiced, what I've loved, what I've studied, right here into the virtual platform, and. Here I am today. Fair enough. Holy cow, that's that's amazing. First and foremost, like you know, bachelors mm-hmm. and all that, like that's wild. So you know, with with that, <laughs> right? You know, so obviously you have the experience to do so. You know, so one one of the questions I have would be, um, so what led you strictly to VR chat? Yeah, absolutely. So my so, so my so my friend Rumham, it all it all, it all comes back to him. It was around it, it was it was somewhere around to either late 2017 to about 2018. Uh, Rumham, he was he was just he was getting into into VR chat, and he was actually kind of semi well known at the time. Uh, he was known for he was known for his meme avatars, and I I, I, I remember that uh, he he would actually get recognized, and pe- people people go to be like, hey, is that Rumham? And it, it was it was it was wonderful. And this is back in the days when he was making um, some some a lot of Nanachi avatars. Nanachi being from the anime Made in the Abyss and stuff. Yeah, he was he was no, he was known for his Nanachi avatars. He's known for uh, things like uh, I actually think I still have his avatar too. The um, gosh, it was P- the Peter Dinklage avatar from Game of Thrones. I he was known for things like that. A lot a lot of a lot of very scuffed avatars, but very meme but very meme worthy, very funny avatars. And. Yeah, when it, when he was showing when he was kind of showing me around, I figured, you know, okay, I'll jump into this. I'm curious. I, I was I hopped in on desktop and stuff, and just kind of explored the platform really. And overall, I just kind of had a fun time just seeing what worlds people have made, the content people have created, the avatars they've made, and things like that. A lot of all, all this kind of custom creativity uh, that's just living here on on this platform just what really really kind of fascinated me. And so, eventually, like over time, and I was I was in desktop for. Wow, I, now that I think about it, for about two-ish years, it was around June 2020 that I finally got got my first VR headset, and that being, to this day, a Valve Index. I just went straight into it. <laughs> yeah, that yeah that was a yeah that was a that was a hefty price tag, but you know what? I'm still here. I use I I, I use it, I use it all the time. Like my goodness, I I I almost just I just can't go back to desktop. It's I say it was I say it was very much well spent. And I and I and I and I still just love being here. And yeah, Rimham and I we're we're still we're still close. He's he's cur- he's, he's currently uh, running his own community, the Merry Men. And yeah, we 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 we're still in contact with each other. We're pretty we're still pretty cool. And here I am in VR chat to this day. Absolutely, yeah. So you know, with that, you know what what specifically. You know, because you know, it was, you said it was like 2017, 2018. You know, VR chat was so different back then. So, what you know, what essentially was the start of working with like VR film, uh, like studios? Yeah, definitely. So at, at the t- at the time when I was first getting into VR chat, the idea of a VR a VR chat filmmaking was something I like kind of briefly crossed my mind, but uh, I hadn't really I hadn't really like um seriously considered it until um, much further along i've heard of i've heard of um the i've heard of this one vr chat short film which uh eventually kind of became like the catalyst for, for a whole lot of vr chat short films to follow it was called derailed uh directed by acme jack and i and i remember how significant that that film was when it first released and um and, and highly recommend it for, for those for those who may who may have seen it yet it's 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 one of the, it's one of the it's one of those films that that kind of just became a classic really in the VR chat filmmaking community, 
um, and not and not too long not too long after, I, I've heard about I've heard of the the very first VR chat feature length film was called Mushy Apples, <laughs> and um, yeah, and 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 not too long after when I was when I was um, when I was kind of getting getting involved with um, with with VRCon, I was I was I was brought on set of a of a Metacosm filming session, uh, Metacosm Studios being one of the one, one of the one of the big VR chat film studios, and it was my first time ever hearing about Metacosm and and uh, and and me and me hearing about their their big project into the metaverse. So when I was when I was brought on set for 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 that for that scene because they were kind of doing a little collaboration with VRCon at the time. Uh, I thought I thought I found the process uh, just just seeing just seeing them work the cameras and things like that and seeing uh, seeing seeing the, the stuff they've made on their channel and things like that I found it to be really really cool and yeah and they, and yeah and since I like, go about over time uh, eventually uh, my, I, I, I eventually I met James and at one at one point I I happen I happen on James and it, and it just and it just so happens that uh, when, when the founder of Portal Media was there, virtual, and we were all in the Minecraft world together, and uh, I, me- and I remember, I remember him briefly, briefly mentioning that he had, that he had that he had a film studio of his own. I was like, oh hey, yo, that's cool, man. And I and I and I got and I got a look and I got a little curious, and he mentioned he was he was he was um getting ready to get ready to film for his uh, for his first project very soon, and you know what? I was curious. I figured I'd hop into the server and all th- things like that, and. Here, here, here it comes. The, the 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 day of the shoot. I figure I, you know, I'll try I'll chime in on this. I, I didn't I, I didn't I don't want, I don't want, I don't want to, I didn't want to say anything as like a, as someone who does have experience because I'm more so curious to see how uh, other people do their things. Um and um, and so yeah the the film the 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 big filming session started, and um, well long long story short it was a it was a roller coaster. <laughs> it was a world it was a whirlwind of things. But yeah, virtual being still very new to very new to filmmaking, and it's it was it was it was it was new it was um it was it was kind of it was kind of pretty pretty clear on set. But at the end of the day, it's one it's one of the, it's one of those moments that it's it's kind of necessary. Like once you once you jump in firsthand, you you le- you learn hands on. That's one of the best ways to learn. And I and I and I and I remember after that filming session ended, um, I could I could I could kind of hear the exhaustion coming from him and all, and um, and and I ask, hey, how you doing, man? And then he and he and he, and he um he, he he expresses how he feels and all about about the filming session and things like that. Quickly realizes how um, in very 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 difficult filmmaking can be. It, in a way, it's it, it's very challenging. It's very hard, actually, <laughs> being able to coordinate so many people. Um, a lot of there's a lot of responsibility when it comes to filmmaking. So and so, yeah. At the end of the day, I I figure, you know what? How about I how about I lend it, lend a hand, and I could just like give give him a few tips or two. And yeah, and well, t- time time has passed, and I've I've lent a hand on on a, on a number of portal media projects. I've I'm I've now become a, one of the studio executives for the studio, and here, here I am. <laughs> VR chat filmmaking. Just getting more into it. <laughs> Absolutely. Holy cow. Yeah. No. This. That's such a amazing, you know, story to say the least. You know, and that that's one of the reasons alone why I love doing this podcast is to learn these types of stories. You know. So speak. Speaking of stories, you know. You've worked with, you know, different types of films and different types of stories when it comes to the films. Um, in your opinion, uh, what was in in your opinion, what was your favorite uh film to work on when it comes to like the storyline? Ooh, okay. So I'd say so far that my the fa- the favorite the favorite film that I've worked on so far. It even though even though it's been a small number so far, I Honestly, I probably I probably go with um our Portal Media's largest project to date so far. Uh, what if life was a fever dream? The and and to the and to those who may not be familiar, uh, what if life was a fever dream is an experiment is an experimental adventure comedy, and it, it there and there's a there's a whole lot of different things that can happen, a lot a lot a lot of randomness, a lot of a lot of craziness, lot lot a lot a lot of a lot of very colorful characters and and, and the things that you may come across. And that's a, that's a project that, believe it or not, was very much all improvised from the start. Um, I remember when um, when the when the inspiration for the film came around, uh, virtual. He was listening to this Kid Cudi song. It was called By Design, 
and he th- and he thought and he, and he thought about the 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 idea of well what what would, what would a sto- what would a story be like if it were told as if it were a fever dream and so yeah just <laughs> around january we immediately just scheduled a film session and it was very it was it was pretty it was pretty it was pretty loose essentially cuz really about, about about everything in the in the um in the film from the storyline to the dialogue to the performances to the characters all of that and also to the camera movement the cinematography was all improvised on set on the day of the shoot the only thing the only the only sh- the only shot that had like any sort of planning was actually the opening shot of the film which actually ended up becoming one of the one of our most famous shots where it's an it's an opening long take that lasts up to about about a minute and a half where the camera is flying through this club and it's establishing the space and you go all the way up to the dance floor up to the dj booth and back to the dance floor and then up this 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 half spiral staircase past these people then arcing around the main character and then pausing right there that 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 was that that was the only shot that had any sort of co- that had any sort of planning and actually i i actually helped coordinate that shoot that was like a 3 hour shoot for just that one shot <laughs> And it was a, and it was actually a, it was actually a public filming session. So we, the reason we made it public is because we were, we were still a very small studio at the time, and so trying to grab as many people on set here and there can be quite a challenge when you're just starting out and stuff. And so yeah, people's friends would come, would come on in, and they not not everybody would know what's happening. So they come on in, they're like, hey, what's what's going on? And we go up to like, hey, you want to be in this film? <laughs> <laughs> and so, some, 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 so, someone agrees. So, someone kind of passed on the offer, but hey, you know what? We still, we still got, we still got people. And some, sometimes, pe- so, and, and sometimes, because there were so many people, some people may crash. <laughs> but, but, but hey, you know what? We, 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 got, we got some survivors, and it was, it, it took six takes, and I was actually dealing with bad stick drifting on that day. Mm. And, and actually, in the final cut. Yeah, <laughs> and actually, in the final cut, you can actually kind of see it. Towards the end of the shot, as the camera lands on the main character, you'll you'll notice the camera slightly, just subtly drift off to the left. That's my stick drift. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? As long as nobody noticed it, I'm cool with it. But so- sorry, for, sorry for spoiling it. <laughs> I. The, nah, I'm not the, gonna put it in yeah. there. <laughs> you'll, you'll, have, you'll have to watch the full <laughs> video. There will be snippets of all the all the things we talk about here and there, um, but you'll have to see that one on on the actual video. So links down in the description. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, uh, kind of to counter counterpart the question, uh, the previous question. Uh, so, in your opinion, what was the most difficult shot that you've ever done? Or or film in general. Ooh. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. So I mean, as as far as far as like mo- most fun I've done. I mean, typically I'm someone who likes to have a lot of planning, but done beforehand. Um, to, there's no as uh, there's like a little old saying goes like there's no there's no such thing as like too much pre production. Uh, with with Fever Dream, it was very loose, and um, while it was it was definitely a, it was definitely a uh, a workflow that I'm not so quite used to. But uh, as as someone who like who also has studied the craft for for quite some time has years of experience under their belt you kind of learn to roll with it really kind of roll with the punches there's a little there's a little old saying there's a little old saying called murphy's law and that being anything anything that can go wrong will go wrong and yeah it's just just learning to be patient think accept that you know things gonna things are gonna happen things may hit the fan but you know you make it work but yeah as far as the most challenging project goes and how Murphy's Law kind of kind of kind of factors into it. Uh, come to think of it, I think it may have possibly been. Man, I think it might have been. Might have been actually uh, our 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 next big project, a totally normal game show. Because at the time, even though there was a, a little bit more structure to it, we were actually working with a lot more people. And because there's more structure to the story, it also asks asks for a lot more pre-production and planning beforehand. And that's something that 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 virtual is still learning and things like that and we're, and we're uh, and that's 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 a, that's a project where we're actually collaborating with some some other content creators people like like parcival people like twice vr people like tfm johnny things like that Kit streamers like uh, like kitty dvr and and all those people dragon dylan 10 i'm just naming them but yep shout out to those people i i i really i really i really can't thank them enough 
but yeah, when you when you're when you're when you're collaborating with so many with so many different uh, content creators, you're also working with their schedules because those because um, um, c content creators and streamers they they have their own schedules. They are they're quite busy people and things like that. So really being able to man manage and work your way around it and um, it can be very very challenging and especially when it comes to c continuity. With with what if life was a fever dream. We we can kind of get away with continuity errors because of the nature of the story. It's very it's very loose. It's very fluid. Really, anything can happen in a fever dream. So that's kind of the nature of it, really. For a story that has more structure to it, you kind of have to be more mindful of um, what's 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 in what's in a scene and how things transition between things shots and things like that. So, yeah, it's it's one of those moments where a script supervisor can really help. A script supervisor is somebody who helps manage continuity on set and things like that. And well. We didn't really quite have one, or at least uh, we kind of we kind of wear that hat here and there. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's I'd say when it comes to uh, lo logistics and all, m a totally normal game show is probably one of the most challenging projects to date so far. Mm -hmm. Fair, no, that's that's yeah. I as somebody, and like I said, there'll be clips throughout the scenes. You'll 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 see it. But yeah, there's some absolutely amazing things, you know, when it comes to both Fever Dream and Totally Normal Game Show. Um, so, you know, with that, right? So right now, as you know, I, I did a little bit of research, you know, so you have uh, our portal media, because I didn't explain this on the last episode with James, uh, but with portal media, you currently have uh, almost almost you're two away from 750 members in the community. Um, and obviously that's no easy feat, you know? So out of, out of curiosity, if you, if you have a rough estimate, how many people in the community actually work on the films that you guys produce? Yeah, absolutely. So at the end of the day, like uh, since we're still a very small studio, a lot of, a lot of us over here, it's uh, when it comes to filming sessions, it's it's actually still we actually still kind of keep our productions rather small. Um, a lot a lot of our filming sessions kind of depend on the scene that we're filming here and there. So, sometimes we may ask for a lot. Sometimes we may ask for just a small handful, really. But uh, yeah, since we often have like a, a a large amount of people in our in our server, um, believe it or not, actually a lot of the people are really people that, that have just uh, that have like heard about us and um, also also kind of support us and things like that. And um, so 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 even so, you know, we do have a quite a sizable amount of people in our server. We actually still keep our productions rather on the on the smaller side of things, but that's what kind of helps uh, kind of e make things a little bit easier to manage. And like for for instance, there's a project of my of my own that I'm currently working on. Um, I, I I intentionally kept that project uh, very grounded, um, so, to where uh, there's a there's there, there's no there's no need for that many characters for certain scenes and things like that. So I, I try I try to keep it pretty realistic and and here and there, and. Um, and 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 Ver Verge, myself, James, a lot of us here at the studio, we we know we we we're we kind of have a pretty good idea of um how, of how much we really have to work with, but yeah, we kind of make it manage. Mm -hmm. Fair, no fair. I was gonna say, um, so kind of going from, uh, the first Fever Dream, um, actually before we even get into that, um, because obviously one of the next biggest productions is the sequel to What If Life Was a Fever Dream. Um, so out of curiosity, I had to at least announce that before I asked this question. So <laughs> with that, um, going from fever dream one to now the sequel of fever dream with all the stuff in between, uh, so it was like Fox wire and everything else. Um, if you had a rough estimate, there's going to be a lot of rough estimates. Um, would you say from the beginning, at least from when you, uh, started with portal media, would you say the amount of like people that work on the films or are working like to be in the films, would you say that has increased or has it kind of stayed stagnant like throughout, you know, the productions of the films? Yeah, good question, actually. So when we so when we first released Fever Dream, we actually premiered it at uh, at FIA's film festival, FIA from the virtual reality show. And that became one of uh, actually the very first film in the in the lineup to premiere over there. And. Needless to say, we made quite an impact. Uh, a lot, of, a lot, of, a lot. Ever since that film premiered, a lot of people, um, a lot, uh, there were a lot of eyes, uh, where, 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 where are now on Portal Media. It really brought the studio into the spotlight as to uh, what other VRChat film studios are out are out there. 
and people that are pe- people that have a lot of talent behind them. Like, um, I can I can shout out some to, to, to some some other very talented studios as well. Like even the even over the even those overseas in Japan, very wonderfully talented people. And I feel like they 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 don't get they don't, they don't get they don't get like an, enough of the audience. But yeah, and um, oh gosh, I forgot what the question was. Oh yeah, how how it, how um how things have how things have uh, translated over to Fever Dream Two. Yeah, so when it comes to the people that have um. That, that, have, that have collaborated with us on on fever dream one uh in in a, in a way even though um it's kind of been some times we often kind of release our projects um kind of uh, at a at a bit of a slower pace but we kind of take our time with it so overall i'd say it's kind of gradually increased over over time and um but it's, even though it still depends on like what scene we're filming here and there it kind of depends on like how much we're asking for in terms of uh, body actors for our productions but needless to say we still have plenty of volunteers that are more than willing to help us out and they're very excited to just be a part of it and yeah it's been it's been quite an adventure really and we, and we and we and we sometimes bounce between some other VRChat film studios like um even kind of even kind of nudging with metacosm a bit as well here and there it's been it's been pretty great it's been really nice and this time with Fever Dream Two, there actually is a script. This time, <laughs> with, Fe- with with Fever Dream One, there's a reason why it says story by virtual and not screenplay by virtual. <laughs> but yeah, it's so even so so yeah, there is a there is a there is a there there is a there is more structure to 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 this film in particular, but there's still a little bit of the randomness, a lot of the uh, a lot of the improvisation that, uh, that you've that you've seen out of Fever Dream One. So vir- virtual wants to wants, wants to kind of keep a bit of that uh, that organic nature kind of going. And yeah, here we are. Fair enough. Yeah, no. So I, to kind of reiterate the question, because um, you you hit most of it. There was one particular part that I was looking for. Um, <laughs> so when it came to people, the number of people working, starting from like the original projects up until Fever Dream 2, would you say that number has increased drastically or is it kind of stayed like the same amount? Like... Mm-hmm. Popu- population mm-hmm. wise yeah so as far as population wise i'd say because 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 we have a kind of a very slow release window for our projects i'd say overall it's it's kind of been from the i say for basically like give or take a bit stagnant sometimes it kind of increases here and there depending on what we ask for but overall we kind of it's 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 kind of more or less kind of been a been a bit of a bit I say I don't want to say limbo, but kind of a bit of a limbo, really. Um, but it's it's really because we're we're all we're all like hard work behind the scenes, trying to get things scheduled, and uh, a lot of a lot of um, a, a lot of preparation that comes that goes into um, uh, structuring out a film a filming session before we go out and start asking for body actors and things like that. So yeah, it's even so that stuff kind of takes time for the most part, and uh, yeah, and oh yeah, no, yeah, and overall it's. It's kind. Of, it's kind of. Been, it's kind of been for the most part kind of kind of stagnant. But overall, yeah, sometimes you may get an increase here and there. Depends on our our production, so. Mm-hmm. Fair. I'd say that that seems to be the case with you know a lot of you know groups, and I'm not talking just VR, but I'm talking like just groups in communities in general. You know, when it comes to these types of things, it usually stays in a. Sometimes it'll go up. Sometimes it'll go down. You know, it'll just kind of stay within a range. You know, um, so. Yeah, it, it makes sense. So with with that, you know, kind of uh, to keep on the side of like, you know, some of the Portal Media projects, you know, let's go into Fever Dream 2 a little bit more. Um, so essentially, what was the inspiration um, behind making a sequel to Life Was a Fever Dream with how much, you know, with how well known it is and, you know, how recognized it is throughout the VR chat platform, you know, what what was the inspiration to make another one? Yeah, that's that's a good question. And I think and I, and I feel like virtual might be able to answer a little bit better than I can. But if I but if I were to, if I were to give like my, my personal take on it, I'd say what 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 drew, what drew the idea of Coming together and making a, seek, a, follow, a follow up to Fever Dream was um, looking back on the the impact it had on not 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 just not just us at Portal Media as a studio, but um, the just spawning the creativity of, uh, of other people in the VR chat community, um, showing really really showing what what can be possible with um, telling stories on a platform such as this, and um, we fi- and we and we and we figure how about we how we maybe try to push it a little bit further this time and so yeah he, and, and and needless to say we we revisited fever dream and considered a sequel and he and 
not not too long after, it's we get a green light, a full on announcement, starting starting our productions, and here here we are. We're 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 deep in it, man. <laughs> we're 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 right we're right into it. Trying 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 to trying trying to tell stories in some of the some of the some of the some of the most unique, but also kind of almost original ways possible too. Like I won't spoil it. But I mean, no, I'll just say that you know you'll see you'll see some things that you definitely haven't seen in the first one. <laughs> interesting, interesting. So that kind of begs my next question, and feel free to you know decline this if it's uh you know you don't want to get too much into it, um because James James had a I asked James a similar question, but I'll ask you it as well. Um, so is there anything regarding uh Fever Dream Two? that you could potentially tease for the general listening audience or for those that are, you know, are excited to see Fever Dream 2. Is there any small tidbit or anything in particular that you could potentially tease out for the listening audience? Hmm. Anything that I could tease? Well, I can say that there's some familiar faces, some familiar places, but the scenarios are all the more different. I, I wish I, I, I would as much as I'd love to say more. <laughs> I don't I, I'm not I'm not so I, I, even though I haven't signed an NDA, <laughs> I think I think I think it's something that is that is best left up to the audience to experience for themselves. I definitely do highly recommend. <laughs> <laughs> oh good i wish I, i'd love to share more <laughs> of course of course no we mm-hmm. we don't want to spoil too much you know so make sure you know uh actually that brings into the next question do you guys have a release date yet Ooh. so right now uh from what i remember virch mentioned that uh it's kind of up in the air right now when it, when it comes to release dates because we're we're still very much in production we're still um try, trying to t- tie in our se- scenes together and uh, since we're shoot, since we're filming uh, out of order and things like that, which can sometimes kind of sometimes kind of make you lose track of what you're supposed to film here and there, but 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 for the most part, yeah, we're um yeah we're we're st- we're st- we're still deep deep into production as far as release dates release dates go. Uh, we, I want I want I want to say that we're going to release it this year, <laughs> at least at least this year. It's it is exact release dates. Oh, I wish I can I wish I can say, but it's but it's. But we're we're still having a great time do, do, doing the, doing this, and we can't wait to show you. Of course, of course. And I'll say if I if I remember correctly on the Portal Media Twitter, if I remember correctly, correct me if I'm wrong. There already is a teaser for the Fever Dream Two. Am I right on that? Yeah, absolutely. You can check it. You can check it out on our Portal Media Twitter, and um, yeah, it's you'll you'll get you get to see a little glimpse of. What we got going on, and there will be. I will, I will take some of the trailer and throw it in there. Uh, virtual, please don't kill me. Um, but yeah, so, <laughs> um, but yeah, so with with that, right? You know, you you said there was you know some familiar faces. You know, is it like m- some of the similar cast? You know, or is it just like d- certain faces that you see? Ooh, okay. So for Fever Dream Two. We we so when it comes to familiar faces, we so we still have we still have our we still have our, uh, our 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 main character, and this time he actually has a name. Uh, you, and you know what? Yeah, I'll say his name. His name is now Felix. <laughs> and, and and for and for familiar faces go, well, hmm. I'll say that there's some familiar base models. But <laughs> that that might be a little too vague. Um, oh, um, so, but locations go. As far as locations go, there are some fam- there there are there are some similar places that may ring a bell from the from the previous one. I wish I could say more. No, <laughs> no, that's okay. Since that's we're still okay. Very much in production. Yeah. That's that's your teaser. <laughs> that's your teaser chat. That's your teaser. That's all you get. But <laughs> I will stop asking questions in regards mm-hmm. to that. But. However, oh, <laughs> no, I I try to I try to tease as many projects as I can within the podcast to give people to look forward to. Um, oh yeah, definitely, and 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 I, and actually, if if anything, like the the reason the reason the reason I really can't say too much because when it comes to uh, Fever Dream Two, since there's still an element of improvisation, really almost anything can happen on set, really, and even I don't know either. The story can go into 
a direction that none of us have ever expected. We often we sometimes we plan for a certain filming session, and next thing you know, we're we're actually in a completely different world, shoot with completely different characters, and shooting an a, 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 an entirely different scene that had that was never in the script in the first place. Yet we still managed to make it work, and that's and that's kind of the power of um, just kind of being able to roll with the punches on set and here and there, and also just kind of the power of editing. <laughs> but yeah. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. So yeah, you know, make sure to look forward to all that. Make sure to all their all portal media links are going to be in the description, just like in the last episode. So please make sure to go check out their stuff. Hello, everyone. Just want to interrupt the video right here. Uh, if you'd like to support me on any of my um, variety of content, uh, I do have a throne as well as a Ko-Fi. So make sure to go check that out. Uh, I want to thank you all so much for watching. Let's get back into the video. But let's get back into the Gersey side of things, of this lovely mm-hmm. VR platform. So Portal Media, done amazing things with Portal Media. But as you stated, you know, you've also done so many other things when it comes to the VR chat platform, when it comes to filmmaking. You know, you, you worked a little bit with Metacosm a little bit. Uh, you've worked uh, for freelance for, you know, other creators on VR chat. Uh, you've also worked with big events like VRCon, Project Community, um, you know, working with some other communities. I believe you said uh, when I was doing my research, you said it was uh, CozyCon, I believe. So, yeah, let's go into those a little bit. Um, obviously, yeah, mm-hmm. Project Community. I know some of you are watching this. Yes, we're going to get into it. I promise. Um, but... Um, so really quick, you know, let's touch on the more like the freelance side, you know, so what exactly, how, how exactly did some of this freelancing come about? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so oftentimes, uh, sometimes I, I do some freelancing IRL. I'd, uh, I'd, I've worked with uh, di- different companies, whether it be uh, pe- people like local, local small businesses here and there, and also shot weddings too. And so I'm um, doing freelancing uh, videography for what I do in a in a platform such as such as VR Chat is something I haven't really thought too much about, but it's something I, that has crossed my mind at one point. And I w- and um and and, Por- and Portal Media and I, I and I we were, um, we were we were we were working with uh, closely with a community called Cozy Club, and I got I grew I grew to get to know the 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 the, found, the founders and the people over there. Uh, shout out to those people, lovely lovely people over there, and and uh. And eventually, uh, I was I was given the opportunity to do um, do, do some videography. Uh, they, 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 they 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 were asking for somebody who maybe can lend a hand with uh, creating creating some highlight videos of their events and things like that. And I and I kind of thought about it, and I figured, you know what, maybe, maybe this is maybe this is a great opportunity for me to kind of stretch 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 my stretch my muscles a little bit, see what I can do when it comes to free, freelance videography on on a platform such as VR Chat, really. And so, yeah, I, I, I became their I became their um, their freelance videographer. I get, I attend I attended their their events, whether it be like just little just little hangouts to bar to bar crawls, just clubs and things like that. And and it, and it's it's been a really fun time. And I was assembling these uh, these highlight videos for them about every month or so. And it's and it was really it was really great. It was actually a very, very nice way for me to just kind of uh, flex my editing skills, just kind of really get to practice and. Um, and kind of play, gives me a chance to kind of play around and see what I can do, but it was still, it was still pretty doable. I thought, I thought I found the experience to be really great though, but, over, but overall though, uh, the, the, just the, the, just being able to experiment with freelance videography and, and the VR platform, it, it kind of opened my, 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 my kind of opened up my, my, my eyes to like, what's, what's possible as far as, uh, just starting a business in, on the platform and, I, I, and after that whole experience, um, I kind of, I kind of more or less just kind of thought about it more, and I actually wouldn't wouldn't mind doing it again. Uh, I, needless to say, I've I've gotten I've gotten I've gotten more and more busy with uh, uh, a lot of other commu- a lot of other communities. I got more involved with being able to uh, be on the media team for Project Community and getting and getting getting more involved in um, some other projects over at Portal Media and things like that. It. Um, <laughs> While well, while well, while well, well, I've since while well, well, I've since at the moment like uh, put my put my freelancing on 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 a brief little hiatus. I'm definitely I'm definitely wouldn't mind just jumping right back in and 
just just seeing who I can work with, just see who I can really, really, really help, um, really help promote pr promote what they do, promote their brand, if it, for better or worse, to call it a brand, or just just have a great time, really. Fair enough. Yeah, mm -hmm. no. And f like you, you said it best, you got to know your audience when it comes to, um, you know, doing the freelance type of work, you know, um, it definitely and that goes along with that goes along with anything, you know, whether it be like music, art, uh, videography, you know, anything like that, you know, it's, it's one of those things you have to know your audience, you know, you have to side to the clientele. Um, and that's something that I, you know, it's very, very fantastic advice. Always know your clientele, know your audience of what you can do. Um, but yeah, so with that, you know, you did the freelance stuff, you know, working with Portal Media. So let's talk how you got started with, you know, bigger VR events, you know. So what what dragged you to working, you know, with these bigger events inside of VR chat? Yeah, definitely. So it was around. It was around. It was around like mid twenty twenty two that um, I was. I I th I thought I thought about more about getting myself more involved on the on the VR platform, uh, being able to really able to really able to um, utilize what what I've studied and what I practice and use it as a way to kind of give back to a a platform that I've grown to love so much, and and so. When, and so and so at the time I, I I volunteered to become a part of the the media team at, at VRCon, being able to being able to create content that helps uh, promote promote their marketing, promote the branding, really kind of build an audience for for the for the big events that that they that they host and things like that. And yeah, and so like and so and so eventually over on, uh, about about next about next year, uh, got 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 more, got more and more involved with uh with with film with filmmaking for for portal media and things like that. But also getting just uh, involved with uh, with pro with people like Project Community, uh, being able to create con create content for uh, for the for social media, being able to uh, promote promote their big events that come up, th things like their graffiti grab, their uh, their their annual project festival, the uh, their collaboration with Horicon and things like that. And it's been a really great time. I, I really love I just I just really love being able to meet meet so many people I, I ever since i got more involved with the vr chat community and just being able to work with all these events organizations i've i've met i've met so many pe people i've met some i've made so many new friends and got to know a lot of very awesome communities there's some there's a lot of very wonderful communities out there and it's really cool that uh pe people um pe people people like uh people like project community and vrcon and things like that we we're able to we able to we able to give a platform to all the, all these really great people with just anybody that's brand new to the VR to the VR platform just getting started. There's a, there there's now a place that you you can you can belong to. There's a there's a place where you can find those uh, those people that you can uh, make some new friends with. Being able to uh, have 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 just like really great conversations with. Being able to mingle around and yeah, just just sh just sharing your interests. It's it's one it's one of those things that like I I feel really really thankful and just very grateful to have had a part in it and all and all it's it's really a really cool experience and I I I can't wait to keep doing it <laughs> I'm st I'm still I'm still going for it and I and I can't wait to see who else I can meet. Of course, no, and with you know w with that you know with how much you've done on the videography side of Project Community specifically, you know. You, I mean, you kind of labeled them all already, and there will be clips and bits throughout the entire, you know, bit right there. But, you know, in your opinion, because uh, surprisingly enough, uh, as I'm looking, we, we, we got we got a little bit of time left. Um, so I wanted to go a little bit more in depth with that. Uh, so what was it like, you know? working for project community as a media team lead you know making these you know tutorials these um you know introductions on each event like how to join the events you know what was what was it like you know just kind of going into the wind with that yeah definitely and and so uh, i'd say i'd say being being able to just jump in and then uh create cre create this kind of uh just kind of promotional material to be able to uh uh provide 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 resources for anybody that's just coming into this event for the first time 
and I I I feel so, at, at times I feel kind of very fortunate that um that the people on the people on the people on the media team they're they're able to um give a, give a lot of creative freedom uh to 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 someone like me because uh, they 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 know they, they they know they know of my experience and what what I'm able to when I when I'm able to do on uh with with just myself really and yeah it's 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 really cool just kind of have just to kind of have that creative freedom but also be able to just bring some more people on board it doesn't have to be just me just collaborate with some other people bring some other people on the team be uh uh be be able to be, be able to um have have a have a whole have a whole team really uh, I'm I'm as someone who's worn a lot of hats and has uh has done a lot of uh freelancing videography IRL since um a lot a lot of the stuff is kind of done independently uh so a lot of the work I kind of do on my own I kind of you kind of used to that workflow but that certainly doesn't mean that I can't work with the team that is and to this day I'm still kind of I'm still kind of working on it cuz I'm just so used to doing things on my own and and, and hence the hence the uh the the the, 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 the little in, the little inside um inside joke right regarding Gersey's working too hard. <laughs> Gersey's overworking himself. <laughs> but 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 you know, hey, I'm I'm still I'm I'm still I'm still I'm still working on it. I'm, yeah, and oh yeah, and of course. Let's not forget. For those for those who for those who may not be familiar, uh <laughs> I I I also at PGKT happen to be known for the little pose. <laughs> That being sus, and so like <laughs> that that actually first came around when I was making the how to guide for 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 VRCon during their big events at the time, and um, I I was I was putting my own personal spin on it, and and and, and I remember when that first came out, it kind of stuck, it kind of really stuck with the people. <laughs> A lot of people really liked it, and so I kind of brought it I kind of brought it on over to to to, to over to PTKT as well, just kind of. <laughs> It's kind of since been a staple, really. I've I've since made uh, animated gifs about it, which you can actually like use in the server. You can also use it anywhere across Discord. You can even use it on Twitter too. It's uploaded on Tenor. Mm -hmm. Just me doing sus. You can't see you can't see my IRL smile right now. I'm grinning cheek to cheek because I really want to go. I want to be like, <laughs> yo, he said the thing. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> like I, I was like, yeah, he said the thing. Like I was I was internally saying because I didn't want to interrupt you. Oh no, <laughs> I ruined it for you. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's fine. No, I into I I didn't want to interrupt your flow. So I was like, in my mind, I'm I'm like grinning ear to ear. I'm like, yeah, he said the thing. Like I I know so I, I know. So some of the people watching are thinking the same thing but yeah no no the the amount of dedication the amount of work you've done with project community and i guarantee anybody watching this can attest is absolutely mind-blowing you know your dedication to project community is without a doubt unwavering you know it's it's truly honorable to at least from my end work with somebody of your caliper and your tenacity you know, so, you know, and I, I want to thank you for coming on the podcast and, you know, giving this amazing insight when it comes to all these things, you know, it's definitely, definitely a crazy thing to say the least. Um, yeah, absolutely. And like, thank you so much for bringing me on. It's been, it's been really great. It's been really great, really great to chat with you and just being able to talk about the, 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 the things I've done and my experience and kind of where it goes from there. And, yeah, I can't 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 wait to can't wait to see see you again, man. Of course, of course, you know, and you know, with that, you know, um, if you had one piece of advice, um, and this kind of goes overall, um, if you had one piece of advice to give to any VR filmmakers out there, you know, any short film creators, what would be the one piece of advice you have as somebody who works due diligently? What is one piece of advice you can give? to all those people out there. Yeah, definitely. And for the, for those who may be just starting out in filmmaking and it's, it's, it can, it could definitely be a lot to take in. There's needless to say, filmmaking is, it can be, it can be, it can be a lot of fun, but also be pretty, pretty, pretty challenging too. And it's, and if, if there's any, if there's any, like maybe like one piece of advice I can give is that it, it, it certainly doesn't hurt to, to, to jump in and just, give it a shot you don't have you don't have you don't have to know everything it sometimes it's just best to just jump in 
and just give it your best shot. And eventually, you'll grow to lear- learn some of the best practices. You'll, lear- you'll learn how to, t- how to frame shots in the best ways that you can. You'll learn to tell stories in the most emotionally truthful way that you can. It's, it's, de- it's de- the, whole, the, the whole craft is a process. It's not something that you can quite, <laughs> quite master overnight. It's, it's, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's something that's, <laughs> that really grows on you over time. So yeah, don't don't be afraid to just to just to just jump in and give it a shot, <laughs> and and don't and of course don't be afraid to. Oh, I'm giving more than just one advice, <laughs> but don't but but don't yeah. <laughs> but for some but as someone who's 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 used to working independently, don't be afraid to to work with other people. Don't be afraid to collaborate, and <laughs> and um, it's 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 someone that it's something that I'm still working on to this day, but yeah, be, feel free to bring your friends along too. And and who and who knows? They they may become like your ne- your next like professional professional collaborators. They may become uh, your your net your, 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 some of the best filmmakers that you get to work with on the platform. And you get to gr- you get to grow some skills. And who knows? They may even they may even take you somewhere IRL. Hmm? Absolutely, hands down. Yeah, no, don't be afraid. And this, you know that 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 piece of advice right there is something that I always tell people too. don't be afraid to reach out to people when it comes to working on projects. Um, yes, I know some of you loyal watchers are going to criticize me in my DMS because I'm very bad at asking for help when it comes to the podcast. Fight me. We'll talk about that at a later date. Maybe season two. We'll see. Um, but <laughs> right. Um, it doesn't help. <laughs> as, as I said on one of the previous episodes, you know, um, as cliche as this is, um, you miss 100 percent of the shots that you don't take. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's it's one of those cliche lines, but it really does apply. Um, so. Uh, one one last question for you, kind of kind of in the same boat of what I just asked you. Um, but as a media team lead of Project Community, um, if you had, you know, if you wanted to give like a little promo, at least in your eyes, of what it's like to work with the media team uh, over at Project Community, you know, kind of explain to them, you know, why should somebody work with the media team over at Project Community? Definitely. Yeah. So when it comes to being able to work on the media team at Project Community, Oh, so if being able to being able to have the opportunity to just work with all kinds of people that uh, all together they want to give back to the community. You get to work with people that are very passionate on the platform. They are very passionate about uh, being being able to being able to give the entire community a place to uh, a place to belong, a place to really showcase themselves, being able to express themselves. And it's it's uh, it's it's a team it's a team that. Just, just, just by, just by, just by, like interacting with them, with them alone, you just know how much passion that they have and how much they love this platform as a whole. You get to work with people that really do love what they do, and they, and they can't, and they can't wait to work with more people. They can't wait to just um, for the next project to be on set on, uh, the next big events that they get to just jump in and being able to be there for, for, for the audience, being able to be there, be there for the next new person that's brand new to the platform, uh, being able to show, show the, show, show all the newcomers, uh, what's possible. E- even, um, even some, some of the seasoned people in, in VR, you get to, you get to, you get, you get, to, you get to, um, you get to show them all, all the kinds of people that are, that are out there really. <laughs> and yeah, for the most part. Yeah. And that's, that's re- that's really what it's uh, like for for the media team or project community. Just working with very passionate and loving people. They they just can't wait. To, they can't wait to work with you. It's it's really really great. <laughs> yeah. No. Absolutely. And as somebody who also works with the media team, I can confirm a hundred percent of what Gersey's saying. It's it really is a blessing, you know, to work with such an amazing team who's very passionate, you know, about what they do and what they want to do to help promote such an amazing community. Which, funny enough, <laughs> segue, if you remember from episode six, Project Community is hiring in positions, um, which actually that video features this little guy right here. 
and we'll go ahead and throw that up on the screen. Um, but please make sure to go check out Project Community. You know, check out some of the things that you can apply for. There's so many amazing things. You know, whether it's art or IT or business side or you know moderation. Literally, the opportunities are endless when it comes to working with Project Community. You know. Um, as this is going out, um, a lot of the things are in massive preparations for the fest, uh, which is going to be the end of June into the first week of July. So make sure to be there. All right. There's my shameless, uh, yeah. Project me. I'll take my check in the mail. Um, or <laughs> PayPal, mm -hmm. Pay PayPal in your DMS. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm not sponsored by project community. I want to flat out say I'm not sponsored. Um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> any, anyways, um, as we are getting close to the end of the episode, I want to once again, thank you, Gersey for coming on. You are an absolutely amazing human being. Um, and I do hope that, you know, some of the things you talked about really inspire some of the people here on, you know, listening to the Nova notes podcast. Um, so with that, at the end of each episode, um, I do, you know, I want to have my guests essentially tell the entire audience where they can find you, you know, any communities you want to promote, um, pretty much the floor is yours. Anything you want to, you know, plug, uh, in the description, this would be the time to, you know, get that out there. Where can people find you? What would you like to say? I couldn't even think of the words there. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, right on. So for, for anybody who likes to maybe keep keep in touch with what I've been up to, yeah, I you can find me on, on my Twitter, I'm, I'm, or sometimes people call it X, but yeah, I'm at Gerzivo. You can also find me at the Portal Media uh, Discord server, uh, discord.gg slash Portal Media, uh, assuming we still have our vanity URL. <laughs> but yeah, you can also find me over at Project Community as well. I'm as, as I myself and the media team lead over there, and yeah, you can see me over there. And of course, you may or may not see some of that sus gif going around. <laughs> and yeah, and I guess I guess anything like also, you know what? Shout out to Cozy Club too. They're a wonderful community that 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 I feel that I myself feel very feel very thankful for. Just given the opportunity to really just see what it's like to practice freelance videography and things like that really really wonderful community i actually do i actually do recommend like maybe some maybe someday um may, maybe checking them out they're really really cool very loving people and yeah that i'd say overall um yeah that's pretty much been me i mean i technically do have a twitch <laughs> although it's it's kind of been a while since the last streamed uh but one day though i would certainly would love to hop back into it it's it's always a fun time whenever i get get into streaming though mm -hmm. twitch.tv slash graciebell Absolutely. You know, and all of these links will be in the description. Portal Media, Project Community, Cozy Club, all of their links are going to be in the description. <laughs> you made work for yourself because now you're going to send me all those links. Except for Project. Yeah. I have the Project ones. Um, but, <laughs> one, you know, shout out to all the communities, you know, that Gersey has worked with as well as, as well as I've worked with as well. Um, so, with that being said, thank you once again. Um, it, it, this is fun. This this is a good episode. I I, I thoroughly had fun with this one. So, <laughs> post editor Aww. Nova post post editor Nova might hate me later, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, everyone inside and outside the ballpark, this has been episode sixteen of the Nova Notes podcast featuring the lovely Gersey Bo. Uh, I want to thank you all so much for watching. Um, if you guys enjoyed it, please leave a comment down below, you know, tell how much Gersey is sus or something in the comments, uh, leave a like, hey, you know. <laughs> leave a like, uh, and if you've come back watching some of the other podcast episodes, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Why not? You're already coming back anyway. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. And with that being said, I will see you in the next episode. Take care. <laughs>